What's up guys, I'm Diamond. Welcome back to the channel, man. Today, I want to talk about Brandon Roy's tragic NBA career. So before we get into the video, I want you to go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy Dime. Now let's go. So if you read into Brandon Roy's NBA story, it's pretty sad. A promising young player whose career would be derailed by injuries and he was never able to find his form again. Brandon Roy's NBA career will start off when he declared for the NBA draft in 2006 and he would be selected 6 overall by the Minnesota Timberwolves but will be immediately traded to the Portland Trailblazers. Now in his rookie campaign, he would average about 16.8 points per game, 4 rebounds and about 4 assists, which would earn him the Rookie of the Year awards which was about I think 127 out of 128 possible votes, so he almost became unanimous Rookie of the Year. However, he only played 57 out of the 82 games because of a knee injury and that knee injury will plague him throughout the rest of his career. Now in his second season, he was awarded an all-star appearance, averaging about 19 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game. However, just before the all-star game, he was injured, I think it was his ankle, and he decided to play through it, but that would be detrimental to his longevity because, number one, I'm all about players playing through injury, like it shows they're tough, whatever, but sometimes it's not to their best interest because sometimes players need to prove something, but it's like, they don't need to. You're young, you need to preserve your career. There's no need to play through an injury like that. And really that showed throughout his career because in his third season, Brandon Roy would have to undergo a knee surgery right before the season started, and he would be out for several weeks, but eventually he came back. And this was his best season by far when he averaged 22 points per game on 48% from the field. And I remember, Brandon Roy, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated scorers ever, and in my opinion, one of the most efficient, because 48% on 22 per game during that time, that was amazing. And with these stats, he would yet again get another all-star appearance, and he finished ninth in the MVP race. Now, at the end of his fourth season, Brandon Roy would be averaging to about 21 points per game, four rebounds, and four assists per game. However, at the end, Right before the playoffs, Brandon Roy would suffer a right meniscus tear, and that would un require him to undergo surgery again on his knee. Eight days, I think, after he got the surgery, he tried to help his team get into the playoffs, but unfortunately, that again had another effect on his longevity because eight days after surgery, you're back out there playing the game. Like, I understand the love for the game and wanting to be the best player you can be and help your team out to win, but only in his fourth season, he's young, remember that, a young career, and he's out here putting his body on the line every night. I respect it, but sometimes there just needs to be a stop. After his fourth season, that was the last time he played at a very high level. Coming into his fifth season, the 2010-2011 season, Brandon Roy would only play 47 out of 82 games, where he only started 23, and during this season he averaged 12 points per game, 4 rebounds, and about 5 assists. And because in the middle of the season, he would undergo yet another knee surgery. Another one. That is about, I think, 3 knee surgeries in 4 years? That's detrimental to a player, and at that point, his knees were just rubbing bone on bone. There was no cartilage in his knees to help soften blows, to help with the running. And after that surgery, again, it was apparent that Brandon Roy's career was certainly over. And after that season, he actually did retire from basketball in 2011-2012, which I think was a lockout season for the NBA. But he did decide to come back in the 2012-2013 season to the Minnesota Timberwolves, the team that drafted him in the first place, to try and get his spark back, to try to become that player he used to be. However, Roy was just a shell of himself, only playing five games that season, averaging career lows across all boards, only averaging about, I think, 5.8 points per game. And the sad thing is, after those five games, Brandon Roy was forced to undergo yet another knee surgery. That was the nail in the coffin for his career. And after that, he retired from basketball for good. Now, Brandon Roy, one of my favorite NBA players and one of the most underrated uh, scores of the early or the late 2000s to the early two, 2010s and he was efficient too and in my opinion one of the biggest what ifs in the NBA because what if he didn't have to go through all those surgeries and injuries would he be on the same level as some NBA point guard greats 
who knows? I mean, we can't know for sure. I mean, we can do all the career simulations on 2K as we want, but we'll never truly know if Brandon Roy would have been a great in the NBA because he was on the trajectory to be one of those guys because he was getting all NBAs, all stars. You know, he was finishing top 10 in MVP. So, man, it was a short career, only six seasons long, but he did accomplish what most NBA players can accomplish in 10 years. So, yeah, with that being said, tell me in the comments, do you think Brandon Roy's career would have panned out to be better if he didn't get injured as much? And if so, where would he be ranked in your all-time point guard list? And where would he be ranked all-time on your list? So, that being said, God bless. Peace out. 100. Bow! And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ha ha. Yes, sir.